Hello, Weekend Modder here with a look at the SRGH modification uh, for Matrix or Cool Runner based glitch chips. Uh, so here you can see here this is a Matrix with an onboard crystal off oscillator, uh, but the Cool Runner Rev C and Rev D would also be covered by this video. Uh, this isn't meant to be a full detailed tutorial. As you can see, I've already got this console installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the boot performance of this as it sits. Um, but we are going to go over a quick kind of pro guide on how the install gets done on this and, and some different options there. Uh, I do have a few more trinities sitting to the side here, so I will be able to do a full-blown uh, detailed guide pretty soon. Um, another thing I just want to call out is that I do not originate or author any of this. Go check out the original repo up on GitHub from this fellow Coos Code, um, and I know there was a whole lot of help pitched in by uh, 15432, aka ModShop, or excuse me, that's the Mad Russian. Uh, ModShop was around for some of this. Octal450 and Mina played a huge role in a lot of that stuff too. So uh, I've reposted this pack of files that I'm going to refer to here on my website, weekendmodder.com. And then you can see I'll, I'll have this link as a clickable uh, link in the video description. So to get right to it, uh, we're going to go ahead and get a several boots under our belt on this guy. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up so you guys can see the boot performance on this. So we'll get the controller in the shot here. Get on, and one. All right, I'm not first instant boot here, this one. So it was the second glitch cycle there. And you'll be able to see the monitor here. I get a regular boot, and then we just wait for the fan to stop. I uh, give it a moment here. Okay, fans finally stopped. Let's hit it again. That's going to be a first cycle. Boop. So there's two. All right, I'm just going to be bad and cut the power. You guys saw it. As soon as I reconnect power here, it's going to go to boot again. That's not two. Three. Oh, it is. Still 10 15 seconds. All right, one more time. Cut the power. Plug her back in. Hit the controller. There it is again. First boot. Bam. So, as you can see, there's a reason that I'm uh, impressed with this. The boot performance is pretty excellent. So, as I said, this isn't a full tutorial guide here, but I do want to run through what that installation looks like. And at a high level, I'll do that from this document, as well as referencing the images that are available in the pack that's uh, been posted for download. So, these steps, starting here, sorry, uh, these steps are the steps that I would follow in general to get this done, right? So you're going to read your NAND. You're going to use a NANDX or a JR programmer or an XFlasher, the upcoming product. Uh, you're going to wire in your glitch chip following these connections. So you've got 3-volt, ground, RST, post, clock, SDA, and SCL. Uh, write your Trinity ECC file, boot and get Zell, get your CPU key, pop the CPU key into JRunner, build an XD build image, and write it to back to the console. So inside the package, the zip file that you can download is this diagrams folder. And there's these different images here. These images will reflect what all the different points are for both variations of the chips that we're talking about today, the Cool Runner and the Matrix. So for the installation that you see on my desk right now, uh, obviously, this is a matrix, so we'll talk about that one first. The matrix uses the same 3 volt 3, the same ground point, and then pay special attention to the mapping of the A, B, C, D, and E points to the corresponding value. The reason that I've got this little table here is because the letters do not match between the two different manufacturers. So, matrix chips use a different lettered. Uh, pad than the Cool Runner chips do. So just pay attention to which endpoint that you're connecting to and uh, hook it up to the appropriate spot on the chip that you're choosing to use. 
So for the matrix chips, this is the outline. And then there's an image that covers for the uh, Cool Runner Rev C or D chips. And then the other images that are in identify what points uh, are which named points, right? So this doesn't say A or B, it says SDA and SCL. So then you look and say SDA is F on a Cool Runner. But on a matrix, SDA is D, right? So that's how we arrived at this list. S SDA is D on the matrix or F on the Cool Runner. Um, all the points, including the back for the clock, FT3, what is that? FT3N2, um, that point is essentially optional depending on whether or not the chip that you're using has an onboard crystal. So with you if you're doing with a cool runner, that would mean having a Rev D, right? So this is a cool runner Rev D that has the onboard crystal oscillator. And the arrow highlighting here is the jumper. If this is bridged, if this resistor is present or if there is a solder bridge here, then the crystal is enabled and you would leave off the RST connection. If the bridge is broken, if it's two separate little pads here, then the crystal oscillator is disabled and you would need to connect an external CLK or clock signal. So this is the clock signal on the Trinity. It's on the back side of the motherboard. So if you don't have a onboard crystal, you're gonna to wanna to use this point. If you do have an onboard crystal, so far in my very limited uh, test scenario, uh, uh, test grouping of one, this console boots better using the clock signal from the crystal than it does from using it uh, from the onboard. You can see the little wire here. What that is is actually the clock signal from that FT32 point on the backside. And I've test booted this thing a number of times uh, in both configurations. And consistently, the boot performance is better when I'm using the onboard crystal. So you can see on a matrix chip, the little guy that you remove or have present to enable or disable the crystal is this little bit right between D and E. So that guy, if it's bridged like it is right now, you're using the clock signal from the crystal. If it was not bridged, if it was two separate pads, then you would be using uh, the clock signal from the board and that would be connected to point C. If you mess up and you leave them both connected, the console just straight up won't boot. It just won't turn on most likely. So don't do that. Uh, one or the other, the clock signal from the onboard resistor or the clock signal from the board and pay attention to the mappings um, you know, that are defined appropriately from the chip. So the last thing to say is that this specific timing file is in that package. It's what seems to absolutely work. This thing instant boots Zell every single time. And as you saw when I did a few boots here just now, it boots very quickly. So high level, read your NAND, get two matching copies, wire up your glitch chip, uh, write your Trinity ECC file, boot and get Zell, get your CPU key, pop the CPU key into JRunner, build an XD build image, and write it to back to the console. Um, there is a link here, and this will be in the video description, to a detailed, longer video about preparing the RevC. Uh, if you look in the image, there's some comments here about removing the C8 capacitor and set JP open. That's, that's these little guys here. Um, check out that video link if you want some more discussion and clarification on that stuff. So at a high level, that's a quick look at the SRGH for Trinities. Uh, again, thanks to the cool uh, fellows, uh, folks who uh, published that, made it available to us. Again, uh, I didn't originate that or have any part in creating it, but I'll, we'll show you just a final boot here, how quickly this console goes. And uh, thank you for watching. So there it is, real fast like. A nice uh, quick, what, two or three cycle at top spoot, but well under 15, 20 seconds. I really like this method, and be on the lookout for a longer detailed uh, review of SRGH 
on a Trinity using Matrix or Cool Runner glitch chips.